Welcome to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's interview, we'll talk to Ethan Wong, the 20-year-old from Street Sfretza. Most 20-year-olds wear flip-flops, hoodies, and sweatpants. And you, on the other hand, have a more 30s-inspired style. Tell us more about it and how you got into that. Well, I guess what really stood out to me from the 1930s is that everyone was very elegantly dressed. Everything was sharply tailored. Okay. I think the best thing I love about it is that there's no breaks. It's just everything is clean lines, um, very fitted silhouette. And just looking at today's fashion, I just thought, you know, it's either it's really baggy or really skinny. I just, I just wanted a clean shape. So what was the first kind of touch point for you? When did you see this and thought to yourself, man, this is what I would like to wear? Um, well, twice a year, they have a Dapper Day at Disneyland. And I think I was, I was on Facebook. I was like, wow, this, this thing is really cool. It's a place where uh, it's an event where people go to Disneyland dressed up vintage or vintage inspired or modern. Just, they just go dapper. You know, it's a very general term. Okay. But I remember looking at one of the pictures and I saw these guys wearing double-breasted suits and they, they weren't the typical like 1980s flecked, you know, really low six on one, but it was the real thing and they were window pane patterns. And this is about the time that I stumbled across um, I Am Dandy by Rose Callahan and Natty Adams. Wonderful, Ethan. I think you just finished a bachelor's degree in accounting and I was wondering how were you perceived at school? Did people like what they see? Did they make fun of you? Did they respect you more? What was the perception? So in college, when I was dressed up, I'd wear a button-down shirt and jeans. And every time else, it would just be like a t-shirt, um, gym shorts, and even like my, my lanyard would be around my neck with my keys and everything. Um, but then when I saw, I saw some older guys, um, they probably were, you know, maybe early 20s, mid 20s, and they were wearing, you know, they were, they were wearing button-up shirts, but they were tucked in, you know, with chino pants. And I thought, wow, that looks really good. And uh -huh. I just thought, you know, it kind of came with me that this is before vintage. This is just dressing up in general. I just decided, you know, if I want to do that, why can't I do that? And it's kind of my attitude toward everything. Um, so... I started to dress up very little by little, you know, I would wear, you know, different jeans, I would buy better shoes. And eventually, at the end of my freshman year, I would wear ties, but they weren't, they weren't where I am now. They were just, you know, like a normal tie with a button up, jeans, maybe a cardigan or something like that. Okay. But I got to that point where I had a kind of a small reputation at school as, you know, the guy who's always in a tie, you know, always in a blazer. And it just kind of evolved from there. My second, uh, my second year, my sophomore year, I made friends with this guy, Raj. He's, he's an Indian guy. He's from Maryland. And he was really good, too. Like, he, he we just kind of connected. Like we saw each other at a distance, and we're like, wow, we're both into fashion, but we know we're in college. So in the beginning, you know, did people ask you, oh, where are you going today? What event do you have? And then after a while, they probably stopped doing that, or did they call you a douchebag? Or what were the, what were the reactions? I went to a Christian university, so for a lot of us, it's when you're dressed up, it's you're going to church, and then you kind of associate that with someone, so it's like, oh, why is this guy trying so hard, you know? Okay. Like, oh, are you trying to be a pastor? Like, what's going on? <laughs> and so me, me and Raj, we would just kind of, you know, pass it off. I think the thing we got most often is, are you even comfortable wearing that? Okay. And it, it's coming from a guy, you know, wearing sweatpants, and I'm like, well, I don't know. Like, are you comfortable with what you're wearing? He's like, yeah. I'm like, well, I'm comfortable. I, I wouldn't wear something I'm not comfortable in. You know, I, I can sleep in this stuff. I mean, I have fallen asleep in my clothes before, you know? And so has Raj. How often would you say do you wear a jacket during any given week? I mean, sport coats, jackets, kind of classic menswear jackets. I'd say probably five times a week. So, you know, five out of seven. Okay. What do you wear when you don't go vintage? You mentioned you have a lot of vintage items, but also newer ones. Tell us about your style when it's not all vintage. Yeah, actually I'm wearing, I'm wearing a mod, well, modern clothes right now, actually. If you, I mean, if you count the seventies modern, I, I, I kind of do because um, when you're in the community, you know, everything is twenties to maybe like early fifties, everything after that is kind of like, well, that's, that's too, it's too early for me. It's too modern. So. Okay. Okay. Um, so walk us yeah. through, what are you wearing today? Oh, okay. well, I'm wearing a, a 70s, uh, 
I guess it, it has supposed to be tweed, but it's more like just a normal wool jacket with elbow patches. I'm guessing it's probably a 90 Paisley tie. It's a modern Uniqlo shirt, and I'm wearing suit supply pants and um, Allen Edmonds shoes. It looks like it could be vintage. I mean, I have, I just, I was trying it on earlier. I have a, a 30s jacket that looks almost identically to this, just, you know, the same pattern, the same weave, the same fit, but it's from the 30s. The late, you know, the label inside is different. You know, it's just if there's oh. a vent in the back. That's great. So that means you combine clothes from different decades, right? I, I do do that. Um, I tend to keep the vintage, like the 30s stuff, pretty much by itself. You know, the most the modern thing I'll wear that is maybe like a, cu a custom shirt that has the 30 spear point collar and everything. Um, but I'm, I'm totally open to everything else. Like, you know, 50s, 60s, you know, anything after the golden era for me, I'll combine it with my modern clothes. So do you also go to the 1920s or is the 30s where it kind of ends for you? I don't think I own anything from the 1920s. It's pretty rare to get something that's that old. I think I do have... Um, a peak lapel, herringbone weave, wool purple jacket from the 1920s. It's probably late 20s, you know, it looks pretty early 30s to me. And that might be the oldest thing I own. And then anything earlier than that, like if you look at the JC Decker images that have like 20s style with like the belt and everything, I, I can't find that. I mean, if I, if I would, I'd wear it. I just, I can't find it. Okay. And also I do want to point out that Early 20 stuff does look a little costumey even to me sometimes. It's just a little, I, I, would, I, would, I dare not say to use the word feminine. From, I mean, I know some people who love wearing that stuff, you know, even with the Homburg or the very Edwardian kind of stuff. And for me, I think the 30s is just, it's, to me, it's timeless. That I think if I wasn't wearing a fedora or something, it, would be not, it wouldn't be that much different than what people wear today. Just, you know, maybe a little bit fuller cut in the pants, but I mean, the jackets are just fitted those the way I want them even today, so. Okay, so you mentioned a few items. Could you tell us more about your favorite stores or sources of inspiration for your outfits? So I mainly shop for vintage items. Let's start with that one. Okay. I mainly go on eBay. Um, I do have a few vintage dealers that I'm friends with. You know, I met them through the community. There's one in particular, um, um, Benny Reese. He owns Reese's Vintage Pieces, which is kind of funny. Um, he prides himself on being the largest, I guess, dealer in the U.S. And so he's got a lot of the rare stuff. You know, he'll he'll go traveling around in you know, the Midwest, pick up some random items, and then sell them. And you know, he's he's a very good friend of mine. I go to a lot of his events in his house. You know, he has a huge collection that I just you know. Every time I'm there, I just like, I'm betting I'm going to go to your garage. I'm just going to check out the stuff that you got. And then, you know, maybe I'll walk out with a tie or maybe I'll walk out with a suit. It just depends. Okay. Does this store have a website or is it just a local store? Yeah, it's a Facebook uh, page right now. He also has an Etsy account. Um, but he does prefer people go in store because I think he's he's got a huge collection. He doesn't post everything on there. It's, it helps if you contact him, you know, set up an appointment, go to his house, and then just look at his entire collection. Okay. So where's his house? He lives in Pomona uh, in Southern California. I also I also like to go on eBay. You know, I've gotten the J. Crew cardigan for like five dollars once. Okay. You know, I I get a lot of my ties from there as well. You know, I'll just look up like matter tie, and then I'll just find something. You know, it, it's it's been kind of bad because it makes me only buy things that are less than like twenty dollars. <laughs> I go on eBay. I go Goodwill. You know, local thrift stores. You know, find to find you know small statement stuff. You know, a tie, maybe a shirt that I can get tailored later if I like the design or collar. Besides that stuff, I am guilty of going to like, you know, Uniqlo, H and M, uh, Banana Republic. But I think that when I people always ask me where I, I shop, and when I tell them, it surprises them because it's the same places that they would go. It's the same same mall, but I'm just wearing it in a different way. I think that's a big surprise to people. But I do wear modern clothes. I do wear mall clothes. It's just I put my own version into it to make it just look like me. So basically you always try to mix and create a unique outfit. You never go to one store and buy everything from there and just wear it, correct? Exactly. I mean, I even, I work at Banana Public right now. I'm actually um, working on my master's degree in marketing because I found out that I don't like accounting. That's a whole <laughs> different, that's a whole different story. Um, okay, okay. Well, like right now, I mean, I'm in sales and I'll even like, you know, we're supposed to sell to these people. And if anyone from Banana Public is watching, I definitely do that. Um, but 
I do I do recommend them sometimes, like, you know, if they're not happy, you know, if they want some other options that we don't offer, there's nothing wrong with going somewhere else. You know, like you can buy a suit from us, you can buy a shirt, but like, oh wait, I don't like this tie. I'm like, well you can find a different tie somewhere else, you know, or go on eBay. I'm always open to give you know, small tidbits of advice to the people that come into the store or people who just, you know, come up and ask me. I'm really glad to hear that you're helping people to find things, even though that means they don't buy all the stuff from your store. And that's the same philosophy we have here. There are many ways to roam, and we try to show people different things, which is why we do these interviews, because many different people have different styles and different approaches to it, and everybody can find what's right for them. So you have this blog, Street Spreads Out, with Tim, Vince, and Adam. Tell us more about that. In November of last year, so almost, almost over a year ago, actually, I was taking a road trip with my friend Tim, and we were just talking about, you know, passions, and he was always into kind of photography, um, very street kind of stuff, and I was really into, you know, what I'm into now, you know, classic sartorial fashion. And he said, you know, we could, I think we both came to the idea that we could both start a blog. And eventually it came to the point now where Tim is more of the photographer side of it, he does, you know, he'll be on it very occasionally. But when it started, it was supposed to, the idea was that he was going to talk about streetwear because I don't know anything about that. Then I would talk about the tailoring side and kind of what I think about that. And now Tim has kind of started to go on his own projects and I'm starting to kind of take it over as opposed to, um, as opposed to being street and, you know, Italian tailored, all that stuff. I'm kind of combining it to my personal fashion where it's, it's not exactly entirely Italian and it's not exactly street. It's kind of, combination of the two that I call street and spread side. It's just, it's just, it's all about like what my style is and how I can help others to find their personal style. Sounds fantastic. I noticed it's a wordpress.com blog. So do you have any ambitions to make it into your own domain at one day or what's the plan going forward? I think eventually I do want to kind of break it out, but right now it's kind of just, I'm trying to not have that whole hashtag menswear blog mindset where you have to be famous you have to you know you have to get sponsorships and all that stuff i'm kind of just wanting it to be right now just an avenue for me to you know hey check out my friend i just shot a picture of us at a party you know this is what we're wearing in school or you know just a small you know rant where i'm talking about hey you know pant length this is how it should be guys so right now i think the wordpress is okay for just to reach the small circle that i'm in right now you know okay. random people i'll meet that allowed me on facebook you know school friends around people like that so right now it's it's good where it is and then maybe you know in the future i'm totally open for it to be being its own thing perfect so you basically want to share your style with people and help them to be inspired awesome so what are the reactions from people outside the university when they see a 20 year old that's really well dressed so in person you know when walking on the street people will most of the most of the time it's very positive so they're like wow you're such a dapper guy or you're so well dressed you know, what do you do for a living or you know, just random people or even at work sometimes. I think questions about if Banana Republic carries suspenders has increased like 5 million percent because I always wear them at work. Is it different online? Oh man, on Reddit, it's very, uh, it's very hard to please people, I think. Even, I'm very surprised because there's, there's a whole um, Reddit sub uh, called Male Fashion Advice. You know, it's very good for people who want to, you know, improve their style. Most of them are college people you know, some high school and some working professionals who have probably never owned a suit in their life. So twice a week, they post a thing called, what are you wearing today? Yes, and I've, people, I've seen that, I've seen that, yes. Yeah, and it's very, it's a very polarized opinion. I think when I first started on it, I, I started because I, my friend told me about it, I uploaded a picture of me wearing 30s clothes, and it was, I think it was one of the best dressed in that month, and but if you look at the comments, it's very, it's very like, wow, this is great. Or this is a costume. I'll wear something modern and I'll, it'll be funny because I would assume people would think, oh, it's not a costume. But people would still like either downvote it or, or just say, you know, you're trying too hard. And I'm so surprised because this is, you know, male fashion, you know, advice. And it's supposed to, you know, foster this friendly atmosphere. And yet with some people... You know, me, I don't know if there's anybody else who could be feeling the pain that I get. Um, but I guess people on Reddit, they either don't like it or they really like it. And it's yeah. it's very in between. It's very hard to please them. And I've come to a point where it's like, well, if no one's going to like it, it's okay. You know, at first it was a new outlet and I was very hyped up. And I was like, wow, these guys are actually liking it. Then it kind of went down. And so now to save myself some stress, I'm just going to be like, 
you know, I'll just put it up there. If you like it, it's all good. If not, it's whatever. And I think that's what most guys in general should have a the attitude about dressing up. As long as you feel okay with it, as long as you like what you're wearing, I'll by all means wear it. I think that's a very good way to sum it up. It's all about you. And on the internet, people sometimes judge very harshly and they say things to you that they would never say in person. And as such, you can't always take it too seriously. Yeah. I think my, that's my, my girlfriend's main advice for me. I think ever since I found Reddit, I've been more like, oh man, it's a whole new outlet for me to, you know, for fashion. And then it's just kind of backfired just a little bit. So I'm trying, taking everyone's advice to heart and just kind of, you know, weeding myself off and just focusing on, my, on myself and how I feel, not what others think. So what do you do outside of school? What are your hobbies? Well, I think I've always been kind of a creative person, right? Right now, I think I'm being creative, you know, in what I'm wearing. It pulls a lot of pieces together. Um, I think earlier in high school, I was really into making films, which kind of led into my now uh, me pursuing my MBA in marketing because it's you know something creative that I can actually do in a career. I'm really into film scoring. I yeah yeah. Um, I, one of my biggest uh, inspirations, you know, everyone says you know it's John Williams, you know, the Star Wars, you know, Indiana Jones. But I mean, above all that, I mean, he's done like Christmas music. Um, he's done like themes for the Olympics and. For me, you know, when when music can can do that, when you can have that kind of feeling that you get from listening to something that has no lyrics, that's just notes on a page, and yet you can feel this internalized, you know, emotion. To me, that that kind of resonates with me, and I just, for me, I love I love being able to create that kind of stuff. Marvelous. So, if there was one thing in the style world that you could change today, what would it be? Oof, I think that I would change. Pant breaks. I think for some reason men still aren't getting that correctly. I mean, I have no problem with a very slight break. Um, maybe it's because I'm a I'm a shorter guy. I've got bigger legs, but no breaks to me, or just having it just sit at the top of your shoe, to me that's so important. I look for that. I totally understand. I think most people wear their pants too long, which is why we added this mistake to our style mistakes course and how you can avoid them, and. Uh, there's a number of ways, and it's always a ratio of how wide are your, your pants and how much break is, is okay. Because if you have puddles, it's not okay. If you have a slight break in the front, it is okay. Now let's talk about your wardrobe. At a young age, you were able to build an impressive array of jackets, suits, and accessories. What would you say are your favorite pieces, the ones that you wear the most? Well, let's first start off with vintage. Um, I have one of my favorite vintage items is a two-piece uh, 1930s, like very tropical wool online double-breasted suit. It's fantastic. Um, it's got a very slight blue window pane on it. Um, the pants actually flare out a little bit. You know, you can see where the 70s got their inspiration from, you know, the very, you know, the late 30s, where it's just, you know, going out um very high um very um very high button stance there's very you don't really see much tie it kind of closes like almost like right here you know it's a it's a belted back jacket and in, in in the vintage community i'm not sure how it is everywhere else but we we love belt backs like they're they're cool so my favorite other items um i do own a, a mid 40s borsalino so that's probably one of the other coolest things i own i mean I got it for 85 bucks at um, one of like vintage trade shows, not really a trade show, but like kind of just a small gathering. And I mean, you don't really see that often. You don't see like a Borsalino for that cheap or from being vintage. I think um, I have a pair of Stacy Adams Spectators. They're, they're gorgeous, you know, white and like a slight burgundy brown. They're cap toes, they're great, got them on eBay. Um, at first, you know, I'd only wear them with vintage, but then now as I'm trying to, you know, I work suspenders now, so I'm trying to mesh modern and vintage together in my personal style. And those, I think, I've gotten the most wear um, on them because I just wear them a lot, you know, especially in the summertime. You know, I'm like, oh, I could wear, you know, my Allen Edmonds. Like, no, I'm going to wear spectators because they look awesome. Yes. I think even on the Fedora Lounge, someone said, Ethan, do you have any other pair of shoes? And I was like, I do, but, I mean, these are great. So with modern clothes, I think one of my favorite jackets would be I have a suit supply linen wool blend um, sport coat that I tend to wear pretty often. I got it when I was first getting into vintage and 
um, when I was going to Dapper Day for the first few times, you know, two years ago. So overall, how many jackets and suits do you have in your wardrobe? I think I have about four full suits and maybe about six or seven sport coats. When I was going through some of your pictures, I saw that you had this children's suit and it has a huge stain on it, but you're still happy to wear that. Now that seems odd for most people, but in the vintage community, that's not so unusual. Tell us more about that. I think my first um, I thought that comes into my head when I see something with a stain or with a hole is that I think, well, this is going to be cheaper than everything else. Um, so that's kind of the main thing I do. Like most of my suits will have holes or the linings coming off or, you know, it's discolored in one part, you know, the, 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 uh, the suit might be a lighter shade than the, the pants because maybe the owner wore it out more. You know, there's, there's always going to be problems, like you said. Yeah, some things like a lining can be fixed, right? Or even a moth hole. If you have a good invisible manager, it can be fixed. But if it's a big stain or a huge hole, that's just not something you can change. So basically, if there's something you love and you love the cut of it and it has a big stain, you have to accept that, right? Yeah, that, yeah that's, that's how I would put it. It's just, it's a part of it. It's got, you know, it, it makes it more than just being a costume, it's like you're wearing a piece of history. You're wearing something that someone wore, you know? Yep. Um, with, with that particular suit, I think I've been suggested that I can soak the suit and I just, I'm too terrified. That might be a reason why I keep wearing it because um, I, I don't want to ruin, you know, the suit, even though it was $30 to me, to me it's worth, you know, much more than that. So you're about... 5'8", 160 pounds of average build, not too muscular. Are there things you can recommend to our readers, viewers, and listeners that help you to find well-fitting, flattering clothes? Number one thing is, is your pants. Um, and I've been, talking about, I've been talking about breaks almost the entire interview, uh, but they really can go a long way in how your body looks. Okay. Um, I would also suggest having higher waisted pants are pretty, it's a pretty good way to go. Um, I know most people don't make them now. And um, for me personally, you know, Suit Supply, you know, Banana Republic, they, they don't make high waisted pants. But what I'll do is I'll buy a well length size, one size longer, and I'll just wear them higher up. And to me, they, they don't look too different than the 30 stuff I wear. You know, maybe the pockets might be, you know, a little bit disproportional to where they were. Um, they won't have a Hollywood waist, you know, or drop loops, but, you know, having that higher, you know, point where your legs start, you know, that can make a world of difference. And I, I love how long it makes my legs look because it makes me look slimmer and maybe just a, you know, a tad bit taller. You know, I always try and recommend it. Um, I think Raj was the person who um, kind of suggested that. I think he just naturally wore his pants high up because I think we both don't like too much of a of a drop cross situation. So we just kind of hike them up. And I just, I liked how it looked on him. And then now that I wear suspenders, you know, naturally the pants will be a little bit higher because I'm wearing the suspenders. And, you know, it's become kind of a natural thing for me. I think having, you know, an immaculately cut jacket can also do wonders for you. Um, you know, even if you're wearing like a baggy shirt, you know, or something like that, if you're wearing a jacket that's cut to fit you, that you just accent you know, the, the curves of the body well, the, the shoulders and everything, that can just make you look miles better than you know, anyone else out there. It's a good way to hide whatever you've got. You know, if you're too self-conscious about you know, anything that you've got under your shirt or anything, you know, having a jacket that, that's tailored for you, you know, whether it's custom or whether you know, you're buying something off the rack and you're getting it cut just the way you want it, it, it makes a world of difference. Yeah, it looks like a million bucks, but all it cost was 50 bucks at the alterations tailor. Exactly, exactly. So what is your style hallmark? I think that it does change every so often. That's fine. Yeah, I think, yeah. When it first started, I was like, oh man, I'll be the guy always in double-breasted, you know. Then it became the guy like, okay, I'm going to wear the doors a lot, you know. So it kind of it goes up and down um, with my style, you know, my, my prize style. Oxford or Derby? Oxford. Flannel or worsted? Flannel. Necktie or bow tie? Necktie. Tie clip or collar pin? Ooh, collar pin. Belt or suspenders? Suspenders all the way. Barrel cuff or French cuff? Barrel cuff. What would you say is your go-to suit and why do you think it is? Mm, I think right now for modern clothes, my navy blue suit, uh, just because 
the separates that you can wear with it is really good and together it makes you wear you know the most crazy patterns possible because it's such a classic combination you can wear whatever you want with it all right what are your favorite clothing websites sources of inspiration tumblers what do you follow okay well i think first is uh, articles of style i do enjoy reading the gentleman's gazette from time to time uh, i think one of my favorite ones is when you talk about um pity and all the pity peacocks and all the different guys i think that's one of my favorite features that you do okay. um, another one would be uh put this on yes. uh, it's very it's very casual uh, Khalid nasser on instagram is pretty awesome i think his name is sartorio merita um besides besides male fashion advice on reddit um i think there was the style forum i think i go on there just to kind of read reviews on more established brands I don't typically go on anything other than what I've anything other than, you know, what I said before, articles of style, gentlemen's gazette. Usually, if I go somewhere else, it's kind of just for like a one-time kind of thing. What's the single most inspiring piece of advice that you've ever been given? I think the best advice I've ever gotten was, I think wear whatever the hell you want as long as you feel good in it. Where do you see yourself in five or ten years down the line? Well, hopefully I'll be able to do something related to marketing where I can kind of craft that kind of thing. I'm, I'm very big on making things relevant for people, you know, not just, you know, with fashion, not just with, you know, creating music, just the whole idea of grasping people and finding out what they want and, you know, tailoring it to, to make it apply to them. And I hope that my career will be in that sort of field, you know, even if it is in fashion, you know, that I, that I like or in music or something else for a business. So if people want to check out your blog or your Instagram, how can they find you? My uh, my WordPress blog is Street X Spreza. It's pronounced and. Uh, uh, so Street X Spreza, uh, dot WordPress dot com. Uh, and my Instagram will be the Teenage Gentleman. Thank you, Ethan, for your time. It was wonderful to have you on. I hope our readers, listeners, and viewers could get a better understanding of what it's like to be a stylish 20-year-old. And thank you for your valuable insights. I particularly like the fact about the long pants that give you this natural waist and the longer legs, especially if you're a little shorter. Great tip. Thank you.